Welcome to Celebrating Act Two, where John Coleman and I have the pleasure today to speak to one of the co-authors of a book that we recently did a host, a series on called Power Tools for Men. Uh, yeah. And uh, Rick uh, Bronix is a uh, one of the, uh, along with Leonard Simtrek, who we've actually done a single interview with uh, previously. And uh, Rick is a fascinating guy in his own right. And so we're, we brought Rick back to have a conversation with him today. Yeah. You know, when we met uh, Leonard first and then Rick, uh, talked to them about their book, we were fascinated mm -hmm. not only by the book, uh, Power Tools for Men, but about their backgrounds. And Art and I discovered that of all the things that Rick has done, he's a co-author with Leonard. He's an author of multiple books. He's a seminar giver. He's an expert in men's issues. He's been doing this for what seems like a lifetime, but no, it's his second act, his act two. So we wanted to bring him on and, and find out for the rest of us how you have such a successful act two. And Rick, I, I know you're there. There Rick. you are. Hey. <laughs> Thanks so much, Art and John, for having me on. It's always good to be with you two, you two it's characters. Great to see you again. You know, it was funny because we had met uh, Leonard before. He introduced us to you via the book. And we did those eight videos together. Great mm -hmm. videos on your book, really. And I always consider this a very important book for, uh, for the times. But I was surprised to learn that you, not that you had written other books or had all these uh, credentials, all this experience giving seminars and um, uh, workshops for men, things like that. I was surprised to hear that that's the second career. When did you, quote, retire or leave your first life? Well, I taught uh, chemistry in uh, Racine, Wisconsin, just outside of Milwaukee for uh, 35 years. No kidding. Level. And uh, retired in 2007, believe it or not. I've been retired for 16 years from my first career. And I had already uh, started, John, the, the, some of the work that you're talking about. I've been leading seminars for men for the Mankind Project and other men's organizations around the world for some time. But I was able to dedicate myself more fully to that and then dive into my writing career and my coaching career as well. Uh, because I had more time on my hands after retiring from teaching, which is a full time and a half position in itself. You bet. You bet. Yeah, by, by the way, uh, you uh, you taught about chemistry and biology, and you had both a, a bachelor's degree and a master's degree, but you also then went ahead and got a master's degree in social work. I, I did not. No, I got a no. coaching. Coaching. A coaching. Yeah. No. Coaching. Yeah. Ah, okay. Not, degree in, uh, Leonard has a master's degree in social work. Uh, one master's degree is enough for me. I, I'm all but thesis for my PhD and I ran out of steam. So I just, <laughs> <coughs> I started having children and, uh, and being a father was more important to me than getting that degree. Sure. Yeah. Well, that'll do it. That'll do no, but it. You, you did go get uh, some additional education. You didn't just hang out a shingle and say, I'm a, uh, a coach or I'm an expert. Yeah. Oh, not at all. Rick, what was it about the teaching that helped you transition to this second career, to your act two? Well, thanks. That's a great question. You know, all, all my life I have had this driving want to leave the world a better place. Um, I don't know where it came from, but really early on in my life, I was aware of that. So when I got a degree in chemistry, for example, I had contracts from uh, Johnson Wax Corporation, which is also in Racine. Um, Wisconsin, and from several school districts, I could have made probably three to four times as much money as an industrial chemist. I, I chose to go into education because that's really what I wanted to do. That was kind of like my mission. Um, another thing that uh, all those um, uh, activities have in common, John, is that they're putting me in front of people, interacting with people, not with uh, lab apparatus and not with machinery but with people on a regular basis. Uh, and, and I love doing that. I love seeing the ahas in people's eyes when we share something and we learn from each other. Um, that is very, very fulfilling. And it's something that I've done all my life and I continue to do, you know, well into my 70s. Did you, did you plan your act two out and knowing that you, 
had a retirement date and a pension coming and all of that. Did you plan what you were going to be doing in your act two? Not completely. I, I knew I was going to continue in this field. Um, I started a website and, and opened up a company and uh, uh, began to work. I was still in Wisconsin at the time, uh, but I wasn't sure where it was going to lead, to be honest with you, John. And writing the book didn't happen. My first book didn't happen until 2011. Hmm. And it, it came about as the result of a challenge from some men in a training I led that said, um, you know, you, you're. You're, you're challenging us about our accountability. What about that book you mentioned you've had on your computer for you know several years? And believe it or not, within six months, I had the book completed, edited, and published. My first book, uh, a, pa a Passionate Life. Seven, yeah. yeah, seven tools for enhancing passion, passion purpose, and joy. Mm. And and yeah, so that was a surprise too. I didn't plan to become an author. I always wanted to be an author. I've always written. I've written uh, articles for you know professional journals all, all throughout my whole career, but I had never written a complete book. And, and that started something that I really enjoyed doing. Um, and along with doing uh, men's trainings and seminars around the world, I've done well over 200 of those um, for the Mankind Project and other organizations and including leadership trainings and multicultural awareness trainings. I've had this an immense opportunity to interact with men in cultures uh, all around the world, South Africa, Australia, all over Europe, Canada, Mexico, um, many different languages, and that opportunity to interact with men, to connect with men at a very deep yeah. level has been a real gift for me, and in, including Leonard, who you know, who's a delightful yeah. Michael Soul and, and a beautiful co-author and, and, and our in my third book and his his eighth book. <laughs> wow! Right. By by the way, I, I was uh, uh, had a wonderful experience watching a seminar that you were giving. It almost seems as if you were in a corporate environment uh, where uh, uh, you got to a conclusion where you were talking about how people might want to interact with one another rather than seem as if they are criticizing somebody. And it seems the way you turned it around, which very clever, uh, I thought was have the person not talk to the other person about what they were doing right or wrong uh, and always start with something positive. But what can I do? In other words, when rather than criticize somebody else is my interactions with you turn it around so that it's less threatening because rather than say, what about you? It's Am I doing things that work well for us to work together? So it was a very unusual way for you to approach that. Is that something that as part of your, uh, the way you normally, I think you called it EQ, uh, emotional quotient, emotional intelligence? Intelligence, right, is a big part of what I do across a lot of different uh, spectrum. You know, to, to continue answering your original question, John, a lot of the work I do is driven by a mission that I have created for myself. And my mission is to create a passionately loving, peaceful, just, and joyous planet by writing, speaking, and leading safe, sacred, diverse trainings. So the three aspects of the three legs of my second act are writing and speaking and leading trainings or coaching. Those, those three um, legs to my second act stool, so to speak. And it all is driven by that same mission, the desire to create a more passionately loving and peaceful plan. You know, um, I think you're a great example for those people that are either about to retire and wondering, you know, what the hell do I do with myself after I uh, don't have to go to work nine to five, or those people that are retired and are sitting around and saying to themselves, you know, this is really boring. What am I here for? I've got no purpose. You, you found purpose. You made your own mission. And granted, it, was, it came from who you were, everything you had been doing up until that point. But the point is you, you put the burden on yourself to make your own mission. You didn't wait for somebody to come say, you, I need you to go lecture to these guys over here and, uh, you know, make them feel better about themselves. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a really important, what, um, inspiration for people uh, who are, you know, we, we, we say you're 
you begin your second half of your life at arguably at age 50. But anybody in that era, um, you know, you're always looking forward to the future all of a sudden. You know, most of the time you're looking back and how am I going to pay the mortgage and how am I going to get the kids through school? But at a certain point, you'll start looking to the future and saying, what am I what am I going to do? Uh, how, you know, and you were a great inspiration in that regard. Oh, thank you, John. I appreciate that. You know, I couldn't wait to retire. And it wasn't that I was tired of teaching. It was that I was ready for my second act, honestly. And, I, and I've been having so much fun interacting with people like you and Art and, and Leonard and all the men in my men's group and men all over the world and women uh, has been so fulfilling for me. And, it, and I feel a sense of aliveness and energy that um, that keeps me going I'm in this world. I, I never had a sense of retiring, which meant, you know, sitting back in my fire watching TV all day that I would go nuts doing that. And I think you guys would, too. And that's that's the whole idea behind the second act. Um, keeping active, keeping involved, doing useful work yeah. that's appreciated in the world um, is um, a lifesaver for me. And I, and I love it. And my, my family loves the man that I am because I love that. Yeah. You know, my, my partner, Michelle, who, who um, Art met at a book signing recently, just asked me to marry her. We're getting married. And I'm... <laughs> that's so wonderful. Well, congratulations. And she is... Absolutely delightful. I, I really had no idea who she was when I was at, but she's just so engaging. It, she could have been an employee, okay, who was just watching after everybody, but she really was a delight. If I may ask, you're getting married at what age? I'm 70. I'll be 72 by the time we get married. I'm close God, to you're, no. young. you're young. You're young. That's man. great. That's and great. My, my third marriage, her second. So we're mm. going into some trepidation and a lot of preparation. We're seeing a, a therapist together and it's really, really helping a lot. And, yeah. and as, as I pointed out, she's a delightful human being. She's also done an enormous amount of work on herself. She is a sex and relationship coach, so I don't get away with anything in this relationship. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then she's an expressive arts therapist and she's also active in her own second act career, um, helping couples and helping people express themselves through the arts and it dance. Sounds like a great match a really yeah. wonderful match you it know it was it's interesting when uh, uh john and i and uh uh you and uh leonard were speaking previously both in private conversations and in some uh video that uh, interviews that we taped uh we talked about particularly in power tools for men how it was important not only for men but also for women and I noticed that in your the uh, the video that I was watching online about one of your presentations that there were women in the audience as well. So do you find, even though your subject matter is very much at least currently directed towards men, that women are almost they seem almost like co-equal part of your audience? Is oh. is that too much of a stretch? No, not at all, Art. Well, I love speaking with women because women are as concerned about men and where their men are that, as we men are. You know, it's like, what's going on with my husband or my yeah. son or my brother? Yeah. Why, you know, why are they checked out? Why are they so isolated? Why are they so alone? Whatever it is. And uh, what, you know, so when I speak about what men need, women listen. And in fact, anytime Leonard and I talk about our book, Power Tools for Men, Inevitably, women will step step forward and say, "How do I get this book for a man? I, my husband needs it. My brother needs it. My son needs it." Uh, and we get as much as many sales from women who care about the men in their lives as we do from men. So that's a very good observation. Yeah, yeah. Um, by the way, uh, if, just as a quick side note, we did eight videos with you and Leonard about uh, power right. tools for men. They're on our website. Uh, celebratingact2.com. They're on our YouTube site. Wonderful videos. They don't come close to capturing the whole book, but they come very close to uh, to giving some of the most important information. But what I wanted to say was, in that book, in that conversation, you and Leonard uh, used a technique which is sharing your personal stories. Mm -hmm. So as you were trying to give us a lesson on how to be a real man, you would each share a particular aspect of your life. And so 
we know, Art and I know, because we did the videos with you and read the book, we know that you have a long history of dealing with men's issues, issues unique to men. And uh, I think people don't realize how much they can draw from others' experiences. And yet here you are, you you knew upon mm. retirement that you were bound to help other people based on your experiences. Right, right. Well, and I've had the privilege of working with thousands of men, so I have lots of stories, as you noticed, yeah. mm. that we in our book from men that I've worked with, um, men that have gone through transformation late in life, uh, later in life, much like Act Two, men who have struggled with addictions, with um, divorce, with death of children, death yeah. of you know family members that are, and, and put them in depression and things like that. And and the the biggest bane for men, as we talked about in the other videos, is this isolation, this sense of I don't need anybody or I don't I'm too scared to connect with other men. Yeah. And so I, I live in isolation, which is which is death, in my opinion. That's this it's it's often leads to early death. And you, and we're subject men are subject to I don't know what you call them, the great myths about manhood, the great myths mm -hmm. of Oh, being yeah. tough and the male and all you know we we're subject to that we believe that stuff most of the time oh, and yet us, we I'll, need we need to get past that yeah yeah i mean we're of a, a similar generation and we were raised on that the, the lone right. range rambo you know uh hero that's going to take care of everything all by himself without a team without connecting with other other men men are taught to be competitive with each other instead of cooperative women are yeah. taught Cooperative, and it makes a huge difference in their lives. Most women have lots of other women in their lives that they can talk to, share with, you know, connect with, cry on their shoulder, whatever. Yeah. So many men do not have that. I'm so grateful that I do. And I have many, many men that I uh, love me dearly, uh, will hold me when I need to cry, will listen to my rage, my anger, uh, or my sadness or my fear, and all of that, you know, and yeah. that. That makes us, and I, I believe, uh, um, a whole person, a whole yeah. man. Would you, uh, Rick, would you do us a favor? If our audience, uh, we'll, we'll put it into the description down below, but uh, I'm going to go on a, a one shot of you. Could you give a couple of uh, places or the best way if somebody wanted to follow some of the work you do professionally? I know you have some uh, websites they might be able to reach. Right, right. I, I the, website, the primary website I'm using right now is the one that uh, we have for our book, Power Tool for Men dot org www.powertoolsformen.org we also have a facebook page called power tools for men um and you can get a hold of me on my email which is r bronick that's my first initial my last name at gmail.com i don't have a personal website right now um i have another company i also am active in that we do uh corporate training business training multi particularly in the area of multicultural awareness is called wisdomwindfall.com. There's a second website that I'm part of. You can find out some information about me there as well. But I don't have a personal website right now, and I'm probably not going to open one. I'm too busy. Well, you know what? If they can't reach you, okay, then we need to have a separate conversation with them. But they can always reach us, and we'll, sure. we'll, we'll put them in touch. But no, right. I, I, that, I, I know I've been to actually all of those sites. And uh, uh, they're worth going to take a look at because it really yeah. got some great information in there. I wanted, if if I may, I wanted you to tell us the titles of your other books. Sure, absolutely. The first book I mentioned is called A Passionate Life. Let me see if I get it in the screen here. Yeah, tilt that forward. There you go. Passionate well, Life. Seven Steps for Reclaiming Your Passion, Purpose, and Joy. Uh, this is available on Amazon, both as an ebook, as a paper back book also as a audio book my second publication which came out in 2015 called seven generation story and incentive for healing yourself your family and the planet also available on amazon in all three formats uh, this book talks about uh, the familiar familial history yeah. of trauma and things that we pass on from generation to generation and how that can be healed, how that can stop. For yeah. example, in my family, there's a long, long history of alcohol abuse, drug abuse, um, and mental illness. Yeah. And I made it my business to do my own personal work 
some of the things you're talking about here, John and Art, and to stop that in my generation, to, to, to not pass it on to my kids and my grandkids. Have I have I done it successfully? I don't know for sure, but I sure sure as heck <laughs> try. And that's what my second book is about. And the third book, of course, is Power Tools for Men, yeah. um, a blueprint for healthy masculinity with my fabulous friend, very, very dear friend, Leonard Chimchak, two Polish men, uh, both born in Chicago within a few years of each other. Somehow we end up in California in the same men's group. How did that happen? Yeah. <laughs> Fate. Yeah. Fate. Yeah. Um, by the way, just a quick note. I uh, have not read uh, Seven Generations, but I am familiar with it. I've, I've scanned it. And I got to tell you, I think that's a wonderful premise for a book. That's a, a just a very insightful way to look at our lives, and I, I commend you for it. Uh, I'm going to read the whole thing eventually. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm part Cherokee, and, and, and exploring that heritage is what really got me into the idea of this this idea of a seven generation story. Um, yeah. Many Native American people have such a, a a long tradition of looking far into the future and far into the past to see yes. the impacts of our own lives now. So what can I do that will impact seven generations into the future? That'd be my grandkids, grandkids, and or even seven generations into the past, which seems weird, but there can be an impact. You know, I had a profound impact on my father by me doing some healing work on my own, allowed him to do, uh, opened up a pathway for him to do some healing work uh, on his own, which completely surprised me and delighted me. Yeah. Well, all of your work is important. Um, and we were very pleased, by the way, to be able to present uh, eight separate videos of, on uh, your latest book with Leonard. So that that's great. Makes us feel important. <laughs> you are. And, yeah, and we look we look forward to you uh, having you back when uh, you after you and Michelle have uh, uh, tied the knot and um, uh, listen to the new set of power tools. Thank you so much. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.